So it's our job as citizens to fill the gap with guardian angels and parent and grandparent patrollers, and more importantly, pressure. Imagine, we will have spent four billion dollars on migrants. Four billion dollars. De Blasio took a billion dollars out of the police budget and nobody has put it back. Adams and nobody else has put it back. We could have had that billion dollars put back into the police budget, maybe nourished it even more, so that we could have had a solid 38,000 police who are not forced to work continuous overtime to the point where they've decided to give up their career in the NYPD after three years and be recruited by Tucson, Arizona, and New, uh, Newport News, Virginia, and Athens, Georgia. You can see the recruitment RVs coming in and every other day, good men and good women who have matured as police here for two or three years are leading a new life as public safety officers in other venues. They were trained here, they were recruited here, they were vetted here, and we're losing them here because we just don't have enough police. So we'll do what we can as citizens. We need to elect the GOP slate, the law and order slate, and most importantly, we got to make sure we hire more police. So thanks for coming here today. Thank you. I live in 42-49, Colton Street. Uh, you know, the, this area has been a lot of trouble for many, many years. First reason is this, overpopulation and overdeveloping bring the more people. That's why, you know, the more, uh, you know, the crime rate goes up because of this is the immigrant community. A lot of immigrant people, they don't speak uh, English. That's why they are uh, like a little hesitate to report any, you know, crime. They have a big problem. So, you know, we need a extra protection because of here is like, a, let's say, last year, 20,000 people. This year, they're doubling, like 40,000 people. Overdeveloping, bring the overpopulation. That's why more problems. So we need a more police to protect to us. This is not a yesterday or a, a today problem. Everyday problem. When you go to the uh, forest inside there, a lot of homeless people live inside there. A lot of, how many people live in here? Not too many. We live here. When you go into the uh, forest, you see a lot of homeless people live there, and they cooking, and they drinking, going they, to the bathroom. Go, go, you know, they using the bathroom. This is a horrible place. Uh, for this uh, case here and what's your thoughts on the situation? Yeah. 
Well, we were asked to come out on Friday to Casino Park a day after the kidnap and the sexual assault of the young 13-year-old. Obviously, the suspect is still on the lamp. We wanted to show support for the police, but we also wanted to rally up the community because a lot of time, and many times, these are the kind of crimes that make people pack their bags and leave. And there is a tremendous exodus out of New York City. So we wanted to reassure the people of Flushing, this vibrant, ever-growing Asian community of Chinese and Koreans, that they can improve and not move. But they got to fill in the void for the police. They got to patrol the area. They got to take care of their children and grandchildren. Because right now we don't have enough police. And naturally, to elect the Republicans who are running in November, who are pro police and will spend the money to hire more police and get rid of the no cash bill. Okay. Uh, just in the last moments, you were mentioning about the migrant situation and you were criticizing Mayor Adams on the uh, on that. What do you want to can you explain more on that? Like why we were more critical towards the mayor towards No, the everything mayors? everything we've been told comes down to money. So de Blasio took a billion dollars out of the police budget. It was never returned. Eric Adams took four billion dollars out of the budget and spent it on migrants. No help from the federal government. You say to yourself, should that money have been spent on migrants or should it have been spent to hire more police? Especially in the aftermath of the summer of George Floyd in 2020, when we lost a lot of police and we see every day there's a demonstration somewhere in the city that requires police to accompany the demonstrators. There's not enough police, and we need that money to be spent to hire police. So what are your thoughts on people that you might be fear-mongering in this area? What's your thoughts towards that? Well, it's not fear-mongering, it's crime. Uh, I do not believe, as the mayor believes, that crime is down. Uh, I've yet to go to any community. In fact, I'm on my way to Brownsville after this, where the bullets are flying, where a 71-year-old uh, man and a 69-year-old woman were shot and almost killed. And crime is just increasing everywhere. So if we don't get more police, then the citizens have to take matters into their own hands. We do it as guardian angels, but I'm sure there are citizens who can do it in other ways. Sir, could you tell us what your own personal reaction was when you heard about this thing that happened? I had spent many years in Casino Park and Flushing Meadow Park across the Van Wick. They're magnificent parks. But to see this kind of a crime, I know it paralyzes a community. There are fathers and mothers, grandparents, who now are thinking about possibly moving. This has become a very vibrant Asian community. So I'm trying to say to the Asian community, no, no, no. Don't, don't be fearful and then flee. Stay and fight for what you know is right. Improve, don't move. If there are not enough police, that's what we're going to fight for on a political level. With the Republican candidates who are law and order candidates, then we're going to have the guardian angels in the park, and we're going to have parents patrolling the park to keep the children out of harm's way. And what have parent, local parents or even kids said in reaction to this horrible crime? What is their reaction right now? They're fearful. Uh, they're less likely to come into the park. And when you leave the park empty, more criminals come into the park, more negative influences. We need, we need more adults, more children in the park as it's always been. When I first came into Casino Park 60 years ago, I was just a young boy. It was a beautiful park then, it's a beautiful park now. In the middle of a thriving urban area, you need a park like this and Flushing Meadow Park to be safe and secure for everybody. And what, what more should the government do, be doing? I know with the Common Sense Caucus, they're trying to pass laws um, against the uh, illegal immigrant situation. What else should the government be doing? Well, the migrant situation is getting worse by the day, especially with the Venezuelans who were removed from the jails of Venezuela and sent here, as Castro had done likewise in 1980 with the Mario Lito vote lift. The president then was Jimmy Carter, which is a disaster. The president now, Joe Biden, this is a disaster. Every other day, we see Venezuelan thugs, gangbangers. The other day, pistol-whipping an off-duty cop with a machine gun stealing his BMW as he was off-duty. This is only going to get worse. It ain't going to get better. And Eric Adams has only himself to blame because he rolled out the red carpet and he welcomed him. Thank you.
Um, Mr. Soto, why 38,000? Why, why these numbers? Can you expound on that a little bit? Why do we need 38,000, please? Sure. When you look at the analytics of when the city was safer and more secure and the cops didn't have to work, required overtime, because this is what's driving the police out of the department. Sometimes working six, seven straight days required overtime, and they had it. If you have 38,000, you'll have a balance. The men and women will work their shifts. Sure, they want a little bit of overtime, but not to the fact that they have to mandatorily work six or seven days. That's just going to drive them out. With 32,000, that's what's required. When you have 38,000, it's a balanced police force. Everybody does their fair share in keeping the city safe with a little bit of overtime, and you're going to have police officers who are much more satisfied to continue doing either 20 years or more. Now they're leaving after three, four years, and that's just going to increase. That's not going to slow down. And correct me if I'm wrong, the 